G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam and in this video we're going to talk about symmetric encryption and how you can use it to protect your API key, that's your client ID and client secret in your marketing cloud projects. So let me start by setting the scene. What I see quite often and what I'm guilty of myself sometimes is putting a client ID or client secret as plain text inside of your emails or landing pages when doing a marketing cloud project. This is quite dangerous because any developer will tell you Ideally, you would store your client ID and client secret as environment variables, which will protect those keys from being seen by other developers or other users in your program. The problem is that Marketing Cloud doesn't have environment variables for us to store our keys into. So we have to have a different solution to protect our API keys when developing in Marketing Cloud. So I've built a quick email to showcase what I mean that storing free text API keys can be a risk. In my email, I've got a content block which contains some API client IDs and client secrets. You can see here the client ID and client secret are the same as the client ID and client secret that I've got in my current API integration. To show this all works, I can go next and I can preview this email, which will do a quick API call to validate an email address for one of my subscribers. And as you can see, Brandy's email is valid as true. I can move forward and Cody's email is also true, fantastic. Go back into my code, you can see it is calling my client ID and client secret, getting the API access token, and then accessing the validate email endpoint. The problem here is that if I was to save this email, and then another user was to come along and use Package Manager or a similar tool to copy this email and redeploy it elsewhere, they would copy the plain text of my client ID and client secret, which isn't great, particularly if the scope of this API was much broader than just the email read required to use the validate email endpoint. So one solution and a great application of the symmetric encryption that I covered in a previous video is to actually encrypt our API's client ID and client secret and then decrypt them in line as we call our API functions. So let's take a look at how that could work. The first thing we need is our three encryption keys to use our encryption functions. As you can see, the three keys you made in my previous video are still here. So I'll copy these three values and jump back into my email. I can paste these three values and set them each as M script values. I'll first set my sim key to be equal to the first symmetric key. The second key is the initialization vector. So I'll set that as IV, just like that. Now third one of course is our salt. So I can set the value of salt to be equal to the salt external key. There we are, just like that. So now I have my three keys. And of course I'll need these in an M script code block. So I'll make that code block just like that. And now we can go and encrypt our data. So we can jump back into our documentation for the encryption symmetric, go to our encrypt symmetric and make sure we copy the code from our example here. So if we scroll down, we'll copy from our second code block our first example as it has all the code that we need to make this function work. Jump back into my email, we can choose to encrypt our data. So the first value we want to encrypt of course is going to be our client ID. So we're going to encode our client ID, we'll encode our client ID's text using the password external key which of course is our sim key. So we can copy our at sim just like that. Our salt of course is salt and the initialization vector is of course IV. The same thing of course applies for our client secret. So we can copy our client secret value as our client secret value to encrypt and output it as encrypted client secret. Now to make sure this has all worked, we can also output those values. So the first thing I'll do is make sure I output the encoded client ID equal to percent percent v equals. Let's output the encrypted client ID. And then do the same thing except this time for our client secret. There we are, just like that. Let's now make sure that we can in fact encrypt our client ID and client secret plain text. Okay, looking good. So we now have our encrypted client ID and encrypted client secret. Let's take these two values and go back into our email. What we can now do is we can now replace the existing plain text client ID and client secret with our newly encrypted client ID and client secret. 
The first thing we'll do is copy our client ID and replace the client ID value. We'll go here and replace the client secret with our new encrypted client secret. Now, of course, we can't call this API function to get our access token for these encrypted values. We first have to decrypt them. So what we can do is we can now start to use the decrypt symmetric function in Amscript. So back into our documentation and we'll use decrypt symmetric. We'll jump down again and copy our code. This first one here, which has all the values that we need. Jump back into our email. Up the top here, we can now use our decryption function. So we'll use the same functions as before. We use our sim as the key. We use our salt as the salt. And of course, IV as IV. Now our encryption and decryption data, of course, is gonna be our two keys, our client ID and client secret. So what we could do, is you can see our client ID will be equal to the decrypted value of this text. Just like that. And our client secret will be equal to the decrypted value of this text. And place that there. This of course requires these keys occur first. We have to move these keys back up to the top of our script function here. Just like that, and so now our client ID and client secret will be equal to the decrypted values of these two encrypted texts, which will then use those client ID and client secret values inside of our API call to get our application's access token, which we can then use to call the validate email function for our subscriber. So let's now clean up after ourselves and remove all this extra code that we put in earlier and make sure that our function works once more. So we can go next and make sure we can call this function and make sure that Cody's email is still valid. Looking good, so Cody's email is still valid because our encryption has worked. We have stored that text in our email and we can then decrypt it on the fly to make sure that it calls correctly. We can step forward and Cloudy's one works just fine and Blaze works as well. So as you can see, if a contractor or independent agent was to come into this marketing client instance and take a copy of this HTML email or use Package Manager to export a copy of the email, they would not get the free text versions of my client ID and client secret. They would instead get the encrypted versions of the ID and secret, and of course the three keys used to encrypt those values. Now these keys won't do them much good because they are only useful for this current instance as they relate directly to my three keys that I've created. If you want to go one step further and protect your keys, you can also go into your users section and under roles, you can of course have a role perfectly created for your contractors. You can scroll down in permissions and find email, expand email, go down to admin, after admin in your external objects, and of course, key management. Under key management, you can choose to deny access to key management to your contractors, making sure they cannot create, view, update, or delete your existing keys. Now, what I've shown you today is designed to protect against accidental leakage of your client ID and client secret values. This won't protect against a malicious user who wants to access those keys themselves. They could, of course, go into your code and simply export the decrypted client ID and client secret values for themselves. But hopefully you can see that this solution will at least protect against accidental exporting from Package Manager or accidental copying of your HTML emails and cloud pages. And I hope you've enjoyed today's quick walkthrough of how to protect your API keys using symmetric encryption. I know I've found this useful and I'll be using this in my future marketing cloud projects. I'll put a copy of the code on GitHub and link it in the description below so you can try this code out for yourself. And don't forget to like and comment on the video if you enjoyed it today. And also subscribe to the channel since you are notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.